In this video, I'm going to be um, going over how to um, graph a quadratic inequality. Um, a lot of this should be review from just regular graphing quadratics. Um, a few extra things because it is inequalities, and I am going to show a shortcut method for actually graphing it as opposed to using the XY table, uh, strictly because it is faster. All right, as you recall, um, if our quadratic is in standard form and it's an equation, it's going to be y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. All right, with it being an inequality, the only difference is that that equal sign is going to be replaced with either a less than or a greater than sign, or a less than or equal to, or a greater than or equal to sign. Okay, now what this is going to involve then is it's going to involve some shading. All right, and you're going to have to make a decision about whether that parabola is going to be a dotted line or a solid line. If you have a less than or a greater than symbol, all right, then you are going to make a dotted line for your quadratic. Okay, if you have a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, you are going to make a solid line. All right, which is, if you recall, graphing inequalities, linear inequalities, uh, the dotted line meant that points on that line you would not include. So in this case, if we've got less than or greater than, a dotted line on our parabola means we would not be including those points. If it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, and we had a solid line in those two cases, then you would include those points that are actually on the parabola. All right, now, um, it is going to involve shading because there will be more than one answer that is um, going to fit this inequality to make it true. All right, using the way I have written these this way, if you've got less than or less than or equal to, then you are going to shade below the parabola. And if you have greater than or greater than or equal to, you're going to shade above. All right, so this is referring to your shading. All right, so those um, are new compared to just a regular graphing a quadratic. All right, some things that um, should be review for you. If the leading coefficient, A, if that leading coefficient in front is greater than zero or positive, then you're going to have an upright parabola, so an upright U-shape. If your A is less than zero, so if that leading coefficient is less than zero, you're going to have an upside-down parabola, so it will be upside-down in nature. Um, if you are in standard form and you're trying to find that vertex, my shortcut method is going to require you to find the vertex. You can find the x-coordinate of the vertex by this formula, x equals negative b over 2a, and at this point you should have already worked with that somewhat. Once you get that value, you plug that value back into the, quadr um, the quadratic and it will give you your y-coordinate. All right, and then you'll have that vertex, and then in the first example that we do, I'll show you that shortcut method. All right, so that just kind of sum summarizes everything that we're going to need to lead up to graphing our quadratic inequalities. All right, now for an example here, we're going to look at y is greater than negative x squared plus 6x minus 5. Okay, um, it's going to be a greater than, so I've got to remember that when I go to put it on my graph, there's some graph paper out here, when I go to put it on my graph, then I am going to be using a, a dotted line. My leading coefficient here, there is an imaginary one sitting in front of that, so that's my a coefficient, the 6 is my b, and the negative 5 is my c. But this negative tells us that it is going to be an upside down parabola. All right, so just things to keep in mind as you are graphing this. All right, now I am going to start by finding my vertex. Okay, so to find my vertex, it is in standard form, so then I'm going to need to use that formula, negative b over 2a. All right, negative b, 6 is b, so I'll have a negative 6 over 2 times a, and a is a negative 1. All right, negative divided by negative is going to be a positive, so 6 divided by 2 is 3. So that is the x-coordinate of my vertex. Okay, now I'm going to take that value, I'm going to plug it back into my quadratic to get my y value. And I'm going to go ahead and use an equal sign since I'm just trying to find the y and I'm plugging it back in here. So y equals a negative, I'm going to go ahead and put the 1 there so we can see it, plug in 3. So 3 squared 
plus 6 times 3 minus 5. Okay, so 3 squared is going to be a 9, times negative 1 there is going to give me a negative 9, 6 times 3 is going to give me an 18, and then minus 5. Going left to right here, negative 9 plus 18 is going to give me a 9, minus 5, y equals 4. So that is my y coordinate. Okay, so now I can write my vertex which is an important thing to remember. That's going to be the first thing I'm going to graph. My vertex can be found at 3, 4. Alright, so that's going to be the first point that I go ahead and put on my graph. So at 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, now this is going to be an uh, upside down parabola and I've got to remember it's going to be dotted. Okay. Now for the shortcut method you don't have to create an XY table. Okay. If you take for your shortcut if you take your leading A coefficient variable. Alright. Ours was a negative one. So if I take negative one and I write it down three times because I'm going to come up with three extra points which I may or may not be able to fit on my graph but if I can I'm going to alright now there's my A coefficient I've written down three times the three magic numbers on every quadratic I'm going to use is a 1, 3, 5 okay and then when I go to multiply this out negative 1 times 1 is negative 1 negative 1 times 3 is negative 3 negative 1 times 5 is going to be a negative 5 alright and this is telling me that I'm going to go down now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to start that vertex, and I'm always going to move either to the right or left. I'm going to run out of graph paper here, I think, so I'm going to go to the left. One, you always go move left or right, one, and then I'm going to go down one. So from that vertex, I'm going to go to the left one, and then down one, and I'm going to put a dot. All right, from that point now, I'm again going to go left one, and then this time I'm going to go down three. One, two, three and that will be another point on the parabola. Now again, I'm going to go to the left one, and then now down five, one, two, three, four, five, and we did just barely fit it on there, okay? Now, it is symmetrical. This is my axis of symmetry. Each one of these points should be symmetrical across the graph here, so I should also be able to go to the right one, and then down one, and then from that point, to the right one and then down three. One, two, three. All right, and then um, squeezing here and pretending my graph paper extends to the right one and then now down five. One, two, three, four, five, and it will be symmetrical across from that point. Okay, so there's the basic shape of my parabola here. All right, now as I fill in this line around the parabola, I've got to make sure that I do it dotted because this is an inequality. I'm going to kind of make it dotted all the way around. All right, now it's an inequality, so I've got to decide how I'm going to shade. That is a greater than sign, so it's bigger. I need to think bigger, greater than, so it would be on top. So then the part that would get shaded would be above everything above that quadratic. So there's one example of graphing a quadratic inequality. All right, now let's do a second example. All right, now this one is in standard form, but I'm missing the B term. All right, which that will make the graphing on this one go a little bit quicker. Um, you could actually do the negative B over 2A if you wanted, and your B would just be zero, all right, which would give you zero. You'd plug it back in. It's going to work. All right, but hopefully you remember that when it's missing that B term, that this C value just basically tells you how the quadratic shifts up or down. So with this saying plus 4, then it's going to shift up 4. All right, looking at this negative 2 in front, that should tell you that the quadratic is going to be upside down. Looking at my less than or equal to symbol here, that means I'm going to want a solid line when I graph the quadratic. And then it is less than, so less than the quadratic I'm going to shade on the bottom side. All right, so um, let's go ahead and shift it up 4. 
So one, two, three, four. All right, and I know that is my vertex. So if we want to actually identify the vertex, we could here. The vertex we know is going to be at zero, four because it's just being shifted up. All right, now let's go ahead and do the shortcut for graphing so that we do not have to make the XY table. All right, shortcut, I'm going to take that leading coefficient, A, and I'm going to write it down three times. So negative two, negative two, negative two. All right, then I'm going to multiply it by the three magic numbers. Every quadratic, you will multiply it by one, three, and five. Okay, multiplying that out, I get a negative two, I get a negative six, and I get a negative ten. All right, so I know it's upside down, so when I go to put the points on, then I'm going to be going to the right or to the left, one, and then down however many I need to to fill my shortcut in. So I'm going to start at my vertex, I'm going to go to the right one, and then I'm going to go down two and put a dot. From that point, I'm going to leave my pencil there, I'm going to go to the right one, and then down six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, and definitely the over one and down 10, I would be off my graph paper, so I'm not going to put that point on there because we don't need it. All right, it is symmetrical. All right, so instead of going to the right and down two, I can go to the left and then down two again. That point is across from that one and symmetrical. I can then go to the left one and down six will put me across from this one. Okay, so again, another upside down one. All right, going back and looking at that symbol, less than or equal to tells me that it needs to be a solid line. So when I draw my parabola, I should make it solid. And with it being an inequality, I've got to make a decision. Am I going to shade above it or am I going to shade below it? Since it is a less than, I want the numbers that would be less than the quadratic, so less than would be below, so I would shade in here. Okay, so two little um, examples right there, very specifically using a shortcut so you don't have to use the XY table, and then making a decision about your shading and um, solid or dotted lines. All right, now there were some cases where we didn't necessarily look at, so let's just real roughly go over just real quick here um, without doing the precise graphing. If I had y is uh, greater than maybe say a 2x squared, let's say minus 3. All right, doing a rough sketch here because I want to make sure that we get the shading appropriately here. I know it's going to shift down 3. All right, I know it's going to be an upright parabola, and I know it's going to have to be a dotted line. So I'm just going to do a really rough sketch here. Let's say it's just dotted of that nature. Okay, now, greater than, if you've got an upright parabola and you want greater than and you're going to shade, well, it's above the parabola, so it would be above it or on the inside there. So there would be what shading would look like on an upright parabola when you needed to shade above. All right, just another real quick example here. Let's see. Um, let's do, I think we've done one of each, so let's do y is um, less than, let's just stick with that same one, 2x squared minus 3. Okay, so if I was going to do a rough sketch, I know it's right side up, I know it's shifted down three, so shifted down three, that's my vertex, less than, so it would be a dotted line, so if I just did a rough sketch here of a dotted line, all right, now less than, all right, if you've got an upright parabola and it's less than, it would have to be below it, so it would be shaded down below. All right, so not using graph paper, just doing rough sketches there because I wanted to try to make sure and get all four categories of what kind of signs you might have, upright or upside down parabolas. All right, so um, real quick, just a few examples, graphing quadratic inequalities and using a shortcut method so you don't actually have to make that XY table. Um, thanks for watching. Um, if you like the video, be sure and give me a thumbs up and share with your friends.